guys, good afternoon and welcome on this rather sweltering summer's afternoon. So it's Friday 26th, we've just stopped for half term and what I want to do in this video is to try and give you a little bit of guidance and maybe a few hints and tips with regard to what the likely questions will be for those of you studying GCSE economics and paper one, the A591 paper. So what have I done in order to have a look at the predictions? Well, first thing I've done is I've downloaded and printed the three pages of unit one from the specification, page one, page two, page three. Second thing I have done is I have looked back at the papers from summer 2014, summer 2015, summer 2016. Because generally speaking, it's not the case that you will be asked questions which have appeared on the previous three exam sessions. That is the general sort of rule applied by the exam board. So, on that basis, I have been able to go through and just tick off all of the questions and all of the topic areas which were assessed in those three years. And now we can consider what the likely questions might be in 2017, or at least the likely topic areas rather than the questions. So apologies, ladies and gentlemen, for the rather low-tech nature of this, but I've uh, tried to rush this one out just before the end of the day. So I'm going to read to you the specific bullet points from the specification which I think you maybe ought to focus upon. Now, of course, I am by no means saying that this is definitely what will be on the exam paper because who knows? We, no, nobody knows. Nobody knows. So this is just my best guesstimate. Anyway, I, it, it's worked in the past generally quite well, so I hope it will for you as well. So let's get started. So you'll know that this is split into, sec into three sections. So we have 2.1.1, 2.1.2, 2.1.3. So in 2.1.1, which is entitled, What is the Economic Problem? The first thing to say on this one is that, generally speaking, you get uh, an extended answer question, Part D, which is worth eight marks. Now, if you look down the bulleted list, and I'll not show you it here because the bullet points are, are uh, the printout is too small, but the only evaluate section is on specialization, where it says evaluate the costs and benefits of individuals or firms of specializing. Now, because that is the only possible area for an evaluate question, then you do need to know absolutely about evaluate. The other possible evaluate is on the same topic. It says, evaluate the costs and benefits of specialization. So make sure you know all about Adam Smith, the division of labor, um, the pin factory, and the advantages and disadvantages associated with specializing and then producing and then engaging in trade. Because that is bound to be the eight mark question on the first uh, section. But what might the other uh, lower tariff marks be? Well, let's have a look. I would say um, be able to apply the concept of opportunity cost, be able to apply that to a given scenario. So just be able to give a, a little worked example of it. That's possible. Uh, next bullet point says, show an appreciation of how resources are allocated by individuals, firms and governments. Allocation of resources. So let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking, especially if we're talking about a market, free market economy, as opposed to a planned or a command economy. Well, in the planned economy, who allocates resources? The state. In the market economy, what allocates resources? Well, you know it as either the market or the price mechanism. And you'll probably, no doubt, be familiar with a diagram for that. Now, if that's something that's new to you, can I recommend that you go to my video? I think it's entitled something along the lines of market versus uh, planned economy. I'll put a link in the description below and I've, I'll go through all of that in that video. But I certainly think that that's something you should consider because 
This really hasn't been assessed at all, uh, not really since this course began actually, this whole notion of the difference between market mixed and planned economies. So make sure that I would give that extra special attention if I were you. And then the other thing I'd give extra special attention to would be the penultimate bullet point on section one which says this, appreciate the use of money as a means of deferred payment, a store of value, a unit of account and a medium of exchange. Do make sure ladies and gentlemen that you know those functions of money. And that ladies and gentlemen is it for section one. Now section two, 2.1.2, what are competitive markets? Okay, so let me run through and there is a little bit more that we could maybe consider devoting our attentions to on section two. So, explain the meaning of monopoly and monopoly power. That has not been assessed in the last three years. Nowhere in the last three years papers has it mentioned anything to do with monopoly, anything to do with monopoly power. Check it out. Describe and evaluate the causes and consequences of monopoly power. Now that would be a lovely part D, eight mark question to consider the pros and cons of a company uh, having monopoly status and don't forget to mention in there some sort of um, real life events and mergers and acquisitions and perhaps the role of the competition and mergers authority and overseeing whether or not mergers are in the, the public interest or not. So I would urge you to look strongly at that. Evaluate the role of government in promoting competition. So again, should, the, should this normative statement in economics, should the government intervene in order to promote competition in a market or is monopoly necessarily always a bad thing? Because as you well know, I'm sure, monopoly is not necessarily always a bad thing. Think about all the profit they make, which can then be um, uh, diverted into research and development and innovation and so on. So it's not always a bad thing and do bear that in mind. So have a think about that and have a little look at that in your revision. Uh, let's see, next point. Next point would be on demand and particularly the construction of an individual and a demand curve. Funnily enough, I've just been writing some materials this week for Tutor to You on that very subject, how we uh, get together and create a market demand curve from an individual demand curve. That's something to consider. All the other sort of aspects in that section on elasticity of demand and supply, they've all really been assessed uh, recently. But that's not to say that it won't come up because candidates very often struggle with this whole notion of elasticity. So I really I would give that I would give that extra attention actually because it's generally not very well answered. And then the final section in 2.1.2, uh, I think that is ripe for, again, that is ripe for assessment because that has not been on any, not any of the last three years papers. So the whole notion of competition, the whole and the impact on price, the notion of a tax diagram and a subsidy diagram, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with, taxes shifting your supply curve S1 to S2, in that direction, subsidies shifting it that way, so those diagrams, and then the effectiveness of maximum and minimum prices, again, ladies and gentlemen, very important, this whole notion of a maximum price, max, a, ma a max chow price, <laughs> uh, P max, uh, below the equilibrium, and then a minimum price above it, and being able to interpret that. So that's something which I think might be a, a prime target for assessment. And then lastly, ladies and gentlemen, section three. How do firms operate in competitive markets? So what do you need to look at here? Well, I would really make sure that you're familiar with all of the equations for calculating revenues, profit, cost, all of that. So profit, total revenue minus total cost, revenue, price times quantity, total cost, total fixed cost plus total variable cost. Be able to do that, all that. Make sure you bring a calculator, obviously, in case you're asked to calculate something. Uh, now, what might you be asked in other areas? Explain how productivity may be increased by the specialization of labor, the substitution of capital, 
So by that we mean pulling the labour out and replacing with capsule equipment. Capsule equipment which of course can uh, work non-stop 24-7 but uh, capsule equipment, using capsule equipment is not always um, it's not always good is it? We think of uh, think of Nissan just two weeks ago when the whole factory was brought to a halt for a couple of days because of this um, virus that was uh, inserted into the computer systems uh, in the UK not just at Nissan obviously. Understand the implications and effects of internal and external economies of scale. Now do make sure that you know the difference between an internal economy of scale and an external one. Internal arises from the growth of the firm itself. So being able to buy in bulk, being able to get access to cheap finance. Whereas external economies of scale arise in the surrounding area because of the growth of the firm in that particular area. So if we take the example of Nissan here in the northeast, as a consequence of that, lots of little firms, lots of little supplier firms, upon which now about 30,000 jobs are dependent, they have all set up in and around the Nissan factory. The local uh, university, Sunderland University, they have now courses specifically tailored to the needs of the Nissan industry, the car, that car plant. So do distinguish, make sure it's clear in your heads the difference between internal and external. Understand and explain the role and operation of the labour market. So make sure that you're able to determine a wage rate, for example, um, using demand and supply analysis. Understand wage determination using demand and supply. Evaluate wage differentials within and between occupations. And again, that, ladies and gentlemen, is an area ripe for um, some type of assessment, I feel, because it hasn't been on the last three years. And obviously there we're talking about, uh, thinking about the supply curves and the elasticity of the, the unskilled worker versus the elasticity of the skilled worker and how changes in demand impact the wage rise and all that jazz. And again, you can find this on uh, other videos that I've done, so I'm not going to go into the sort of theories on these. But that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. So, uh, I'm as I, I reiterate, I do not have a golden, a golden ball here. I'm just looking at the criteria in the same way that you can do, and I'm just thinking what might be the likely, most likely areas of assessment. This exam, obviously, is straight after the half-term break, so maybe you want to focus on these areas. I wish you the very best of luck. Bye for now.